Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. We're going to take a break from the Aztec radio for a little while until I've got some more time to futz with it. What you're looking at today is about a 1967 Admiral PK-1369 13-inch portable black and white television. This has kind of a special place uh, as it was the first tube set that I actually worked on many 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 years ago when I first started getting into this hobby I was probably like 10 and uh, picked it up at a yard sale and it, not this very set but the same model picked it up at a yard sale uh, troubleshot it found that it had a no B voltage condition replaced the bad filter and the fusible resistor inside and then played it until it died and uh, recently about a couple months ago another person on a Facebook discussion forum I belong to posted uh, and this was in the background of one of the pictures and I said hey you want to sell that and he's like yeah sure why not so he sent it to me it survived the plastics badly yellowed it needs to be retro brighted or whatever it is that people do to these things to make them spiffy looking but this will be the first time that I'm digging into it so we're gonna take it apart test the CRT make sure that uh, it's capable of running I haven't even tried to plug it in yet so I have no idea what the history is on it. So let's get the back off and see uh, what's inside. All right, so here's the innards. We can definitely see that it's seen some uh, rain and water for sure. This is pretty much how I remember it. This is mostly compact drawns. Definitely been submerged or got rained on or something. My biggest concern is, uh, did the yoke survive? This has got one of these uh, rectifiers, weird one, like a 1BC2 or something like that. 33GY7 output dampener has obviously been replaced. Uh, there's a probably a warning tag or something in here. And here's your tube chart. All right. So the one that I had also had one of these across the line caps short too. Those are fun. And just putting it on its butt. Take a look here. And the tube sockets need to be resoldered. Those are all breaking loose. Those are all breaking loose there. Ring around the leads. Bad news there. Got to redo all those. Why they ever thought it was a good idea to put tubes on circuit boards, I have no idea. Probably a little bird told them it went cheap, cheap, cheap. All right, well, let's get the CRT tester on it and see what it does. Okay, dokie, so we got our Beltron hooked up. And let's go ahead and connect the CRT and see what happens. Let's look for that nice little filament glow. Hopefully it's still okay. That's good. Filament lights. We're going to put it at about 5 volts and see what happens here. So far not much of anything. Let's go up to 6 volts. That thing even moving? Doesn't look like it is. Let's go up to uh, 8 volts. Uh, we got something at 8 volts. Shit, this thing's dead. Yeah, let's go up to 10. And yeah, we get a little bit of emission at 10 volts. <laughs> 
let's see if it'll do the uh, cleaning cycle. Nope, not good enough. Alright, let's do a rejuve cycle just because. And yeah, let's increase the voltage. Hopefully the current starts flowing. We need to get to about 80 millivolts or 80 microamperes rather. Uh, shows, shows a short interesting so it looks like it's got a dud CRT in it the fact that I gotta crank it up that much and even interrupting the heater doesn't change the current draw so it's probably got a short in it somewhere no bueno Because at 10 volts, it barely makes any emission. That's interesting. The emission's going up as I turn the voltage down. But still no, uh, no activity. might need to be one of those brute force brute force kind of things with like the CR7000 or something like that so that's no good if we hit the interrupt switch ten seconds where the emission starts to fall off so it's a weak tube, but we might be able to get a picture out of that. We'll see. All right, so let's uh, let's stick a dim bulb uh, tester in front of this thing and plug it in and see what happens. All right, so I got the dim bulb tester hooked up. This is really just going to absorb most of the inrush, and then I'll switch over to something else because you can't really run these with a dim bulb tester in series there's not enough current to start the oscillator and then you have to worry about hurting the set so we'll just click it on and see what happens it's getting pretty dim that's a good sign all oh, filaments are lighting up that's good series string set I guess it would have to starting to get a little brighter all right nothing weird I don't hear any vertical or horizontal so, but the fact that that's dim is a good sign. It's getting a little brighter, so maybe there's B voltage there. So let's take it off the uh, dim bulb tester and see what we get then. All right, so this is without it in circuit. That's a trip. That's your bad yoke right there. All right, well, that pretty much nails that. Nice bright raster, though.
Oh, short cleared. Interesting. Whatever it was, it cleared itself. I should probably pull that yoke and clean all that garbage off of there. Interesting. Let's hook a signal generator up to it. All right, let's try again with a little Heath kit thing hooked up. Definitely got some issues to overcome. You can see we got issues going on here. The yoke has decidedly got a short. It's trapezoiding like crazy. And this thing is like mooey, unstable. But it's alive. That's kind of cool. You can definitely hear something sizzling in the yolk still. I think I just need to very carefully clean that up and see if I can save it. All those tube sockets need to be resoldered. This thing's unstable if you even so much as tap on it. There it is so far. It's trying to work. Pretty cool. So I think the next step is going to be uh, cleaning the yoke up. See what we can do to help it. All right, so let's get the yoke off the uh, CRT and see if uh, I can clean up some stuff in here. If that's possible. We can figure out where the arcing was. <laughs> Excuse me. I definitely heard it, and something was pissed off in here. Sorry about that, keep moving the camera aside. I'm pretty much bet that this was outside in a shed or somewhere where there was water intrusion. Of course, it also has glue on here that may be contributory to its health problems. Yeah, I wonder if I can get some of that gunk out of there, whatever that is, without hurting this too much. Yeah, let's get something to clean it off with. Alright, so I'm going to try to clean this with some denatured alcohol. Uh, just because. Yeah, let me get two hands. I really need two hands for this. Getting a little better, cleaning a lot of that up there. I'm hoping that that's not uh, attacking the windings in any way. Not sure what it is. 
I don't know if it's glue or if it's just something that happens to be there. I'm trying to clean it off as carefully as possible so not to hurt the windings. And I'm hoping that whatever that is hasn't hurt them either. Here's inside the yoke with the back cover off. I'm trying to see if I can find any evidence where it was arcing. Because we all heard it. Little tiny fine wires, got to be careful with. But nominally, it looks okay. I'm guessing whatever was happening is probably in here. I think I'm going to very carefully try to get a plastic tool or something that's non abrasive and pick all that out. Uh, hopefully, without hurting anything. And then we'll put the yoke back on and see if there's any change in its behavior. I doubt it, but it's worth a shot. Okay, so I've cleaned off uh, this nasty gunk as best possible in between the windings and stuff. Clear some more nasty glue there. Clean the uh, neck of the CRT off. So really the last thing left to do is to put it all back together and see if that helped us at all. I don't think it did, but it's worth a try. So let me go ahead and center this up best possible. And then we'll need two hands to do the clamp. Okay, well, that the yoke's back on it. Let's see if that changes anything about this set. I don't think it will, but it's worth taking a look. Yeah, we still got probably a shorter turn of some kind. It trapezoids. Yeah, those tube sockets all need to be redone. But I think that'll be in part two. <laughs> it's amazing it works. I'm sure it could have been a lot worse. So that'll be all for this episode. Uh, you can see it free. I think what we'll do next is redo all those uh, tube sockets. Uh, maybe see if there's any capacitors or anything shunting the yoke that would have caused that distortion. Maybe I'll get lucky. Uh, but yeah, so there you are. It's freaking out now. So until next time, thanks for watching the video. More stuff to come.